Ola, Aries, Moon, Sagittarius, Suns. This is your 2019 Sun Moon reading. If this resonates, consider personal reading. Rate, info, and email are below. When you view it, it's when you were meant to see it. It doesn't matter the time of year, and I'm doing them in order of requests in the comments. First portion of this reading, I will read the textbook definition of your Sun Moon sign, so please refer to the source below that I credited. I'll lay out the main cards. We'll take a quick look at your 2019. Second portion of this will be the link below to the Vimeo reading, where I'll have a deeper interpretation of the cards in addition to clarifiers. I'll be dividing the year up into four separate quadrants. Other things to mention, I'm on Instant Go if you need a quick answer to a quick question. I upload Facebook, I mean, uh, weeklies to Facebook and Instagram. So follow and uh, what? What am I trying to say? Like, follow, message me on there. Um, make sure you check out my playlist for my 2018 readings. See if they rang true for you. And I will always be working on my compatibility readings, which are also my playlist. So. Aries Sun, Sagittarius Moons, the combination of your Sun and Moon sign produces self-determination affecting the way you think, act, and speak. This is your position of dynamic ideals and popular appeal. You believe in your you believe in your truth with complete confidence. This belief is perhaps not in the facts of reality, but more likely a philosophy of life and other larger issues and, lar and other large issue beliefs you hold dear. The natural tendency for Aries to be the pioneer, the fighter, the doer, and the initiator of new concepts and ideas is not greatly modified by this combination. Yet the Sagittarius moon does impose a personal code of ethics and honor that may not always be present in the brash Aries native. In you, executive powers are strongly marked, taking the form of controlling others with ideas and principles. The proper path that should be followed is so clear to you that you are not one to ever mince words in plotting the course. Your intensely emotional approach to getting something accomplished can sometimes limit your awareness of the feelings of others, and you can be tough on those around you. The human frailties of pettiness, emotionalism, and jealousy are not well understood by you and do not relate well with your totally open and frank personality. You're definitely a leader. That just blew out. <laughs> You're definitely a leader of men. That's funny that that flew out. <laughs> definitely a leader of men, although you may not always understand them. Conversely, people may completely respect you, but fault you for lack of sensitivity. In all types of dealings, there is a tendency to employ a broad brush approach, often finding it difficult to come down to the real and personal everyday issues. You're a gambler who is unafraid of the risk involved. You know how to get things done with a broad brush stroke, leaving the finishing details to others. Okay, so um, it's funny that this came out. The five of um, the five of ones. When we were talking about, uh, you're definitely a leader of men, although you don't always understand them. Um, people may completely respect you, but fault you for your lack of sensitivity. So, this is kind of um, just in general. This is an interesting card that came out because, um, you know, this is the card of conflicts, and this is the card about uh, being the leader, but having to having rivalry with other people and needing to stay on top and having to get into those conflicts and those disagreements and tension and compete with people to kind of um, assert yourself. So this is what I'm kind of getting. And this is just, you know, I don't think this came out in regards to 2019. I just feel like this was a card that just came out to kind of um, further describe your, your personality that you guys are fine to jump in with rivals and compete and land on top. Okay, so let's see what's going on for your year. Holy Spirit Angels, what do you see for Aries Sagittarius's for January, February, March? We see the Five of Swords in reverse. What do you see April, May, June for Aries Sun, Sagittarius Moons? We have the Sun card in the upright. July, August, September, Aries Sun, Sagittarius Moons. What do you see? We have the Three of Pentacles in the upright. October, November, December. You guys have the Ten of Swords in the upright. Alrighty? So I see you guys starting off the year, putting down your swords, coming out of some struggle, some kind of conflict that you have um, with somebody. Um, the Five of Swords can also... No, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with that because that that's what I was feeling. And I feel like you you were kind of you were kind of maybe having arguments with people and what have you, and you've decided to put those swords down. You're you have other you have other focus right now. You're no longer caught up in the noise of these people, what their opinions are, what have you. You're very focused on something else and kind of like clearing out the the opinions, the noise, the outside information. So that's for January, February, March, April, May, June. I see you guys with the Sun card, which is. Um, which is one of the cards of Leo. Um, the Sun card has you guys really in 
April, May, June, really having happiness and joy and radiance. You're enjoying all the good things that there are in life. You're very optimistic. You're also, um, the sun card can be about, it's the end of darkness. So if you are going through, went through a dark period here in regards to conflict and struggle and what have you and coming out of it, I think um, April, May, June is going to be your time when things really start to flourish. You really feel good about things. I mean, this is the springtime, so the sun's coming out. Things are warm. You're getting optimistic. I feel for some of you, you get you might get a little bit of a funk, like in the wintertime and in, in the, the darker months or something like that. And maybe you guys are coming to bloom in the springtime during this period of time. Um, very fulfilled, not having anything to hide, um, really open, open to, because the open arms there, the baby, open to anything that's like fun and childlike activities to do perhaps during this period of time. Three of Pentacles we have for July, August, September. Um, this is you guys possibly working with other people, um, doing some, some sort of work that is appreciated by other people. It could be the work of like an artist or a craftsman or something of that sort. And, um, but working, working on it with other people and making it come to fruition. And it's such a beauteous thing. It's being put on display and you get, um, recognized for it for some of you celebrity Theism is often associated with this or some sort of elevated status because of work that has been completed or work that has been done um, you know gallery I often think of the you know artists pieces being shown in a gallery or whatnot um, but it is a team effort there's other people involved with this I mean even if it's a manager or um, you know building a building and somebody has the building plan and you're the person who actually constructs it and the other person is like the architect you know it's always like a collaborative effort. So I feel like there's some kind of project going on for you in July, August, September, that's gonna really kind of full, um, be, be very pleasing and you'll be recognized for your hard work and efforts. Now we move into October, November, December, we have the Ten of Swords. So this is a, something ending, it usually is. It's usually not a pleasant ending. It happens very suddenly, it's very painful. Um, you could feel like you've been betrayed. And as a result of this ending, it's gonna be a very dark point, okay? It's gonna be the end of a cycle. Um, um, I'm trying, I, I'm just getting the darkness here then, and it's a shame because it's over the holidays, etc. So, you know, it kind of sucks, but, um, and you're also maybe feeling a little bit, um, like it's out of your hands. You're feeling powerless. Uh, there's really nothing you could do about it, which actually adds to the, the sadness or the, the pain associated with it. So just remember that for the end of the year. Um, so click on the link below and we'll go into Vimeo. I'll go into these deeper. I'll pull clarifiers and we'll get a better look at what your 2019 look like, looks like. Otherwise, guys, thank you for your support, your support throughout the years. And I'll see you around on YouTube with my other videos. Adios from Veronica Garnett. Bye.